Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks, Andy, for the introduction. So I'm Hao Yuan. Uh, you can call me HY. So uh, I'm going to talk about tacking on reliable fi file sharing and memory speed across uh, cluster frameworks. And um, uh, in case you may have interest in physics, tacking is a particle moving faster than light. And uh, the picture on the right is what you see if you search tacking at Google Image. So, uh, so this is the outline of the talk. I'm going to give the motivation of the project first, followed by the system design re evaluation results, as well as the release status. Future directions will be provided in the end. First of all, as we all know, memory is the king. And uh, on one hand, both memory and disk capacity, they increase exponentially every year. On the other hand, only memory throughput increase exponentially. Uh, you can see that it's, it's common to, to find a memory uh, can run at 25 gigabytes per second per channel. It's not rare to find a machine with four channels. On the other hand, for the disk throughput, it's only 20, uh, 150 megabytes per second. All these lead to the uh, consequence that memory locality is the key to achieve interactive queries and fast query response. Then let's take a look at the current big data ecosystem. There are many frameworks such as Spark, Shark, which are they learned here, they leverage memory already. And uh, the thing is, when they share the data, uh, they, they still need to, when they share the data between different frameworks or between different jobs, they still need to write the data into a, uh, a storage system. And they use replication to achieve fault tolerance, which means you need to write to disks on different machines, on different machines through a network. So the problems are, first, uh, this scan for read is slow. Second, synchronous disk replication for write is even slower. So all this motivate us to do this TechCamp project. We try to enable reliable file sharing and memory speed across uh, cluster frameworks and jobs, no matter for read or write. So the challenge is, you know, since we can do read maybe for caching system, the challenge is for write, how can we achieve reliable uh, how can we achieve memory throughput right without replication reliably? So the, the basic idea for us is we, we build a recommutation based storage system and we use uh, memory aggressively. And we use the lineage concept, we borrowed, we borrowed it from a Spark framework. So there are two key things here. The first one is for write, we, we only write one single copy of the data to memory. This will enable fast write. And the second thing is, upon failure, the system recomputes the data using lineage to enable fault tolerance. So this is a stack picture from uh, Amplab, Amplab uh, website. This is a little bit out of date. But uh, this shows where Tycoon sits in the, in the stack. Basically, it sits between frameworks such as Spark, MapReduce, and existing uh, storage, uh, distributed storage system such as HTFS, S3 and the Gloucester FS. So here is the uh, system's architecture. So it has a single master which keeps tracking the status of every worker node as well as the location of each file. On every worker node, we run a worker daemon managing the local space as well as reporting status periodically to the master node. And also, besides the worker daemon, we also run a RAM FS which really holds the in memory data. And uh, Tycoon provides a client library used by uh, frameworks and, and applications to access the data. And one thing no, uh, worth mentioning here is when, when, the client, when the application or jobs access the data on the local disk, on the, which has a locality, it will access the RAMFS directly to enable the full memory performance without going through the Tycoon worker daemon. So then let's talk about the key concept in this system, which is the lineage, what's, the, what's about. So basically, this, for this graph, you have a file sets x, and you have a Spark program reads x and generates y, and you have a uh, MapReduce program reads y and generates z, right? So this whole information, including how to run this data, how to run this program, is called a lineage. And uh, Tachyon records this information reliably. This means that the, by using this information to enable the fault tolerance, fault tolerance, which means that, say, if file sets Y or Z got lost, Tech can just, can just relaunch this program to recompute them. So 
so here we have two assumptions. The first one is uh, all the files, they are immutable. And the second one is uh, uh, the programs, applications, they are deterministic. So in order to capture the lineage, inf cons lineage information across different frameworks and jobs, we need the following information. The first one is the what's the binary, binary program to run? What's its configuration? And what's the, what are the input file and output files list, right? And uh, we need the dependency type such as narrow or wide dependency to enable fast uh, or efficient um, data recovery. So Tycan provides the API to allow frameworks to submit this information to the system. And then uh, when, when failure happens, Tycan can recompute the data. So we already implemented a 200 lines patch for Spark and 200 lines patch for MapReduce to work with this recomputation based recovery. And one thing we want to say here is, since distributed programming is already complicated, we don't want to put extra burden to uh, application programmers. So as long as the framework implement this integration, all the application on top of the framework will use this transparently, which means like MapReduce programmers or Spark programmers, you don't need to understand or you don't need to know this, the existence of this concept and you will, we will get this benefit transparently. Since Ty can use recommutation to, uh, to have the fault tolerance, one natural question to ask is how long the recommutation will take if there's a failure, right? So the thing is, if failure happens very often, the benefit, uh, the cost of, to do the recommutation could be higher than the benefit of the memory throughput uh, I.O. So the good news is from various reports, uh, there are only one or two nodes failure, uh, nodes failure in a cluster with uh, two to 3,000 nodes. So we, we, we are in a good shape. But the thing is, when failure does happen, if the lineage is long, it could take a long time to recompute the, the data, which is not what we want. So let's take a look at an example, which is uh, the same graph we showed before. Say so you have this lineage graph, right? So say the, the computation has been done, all the, file, all the file in Y or Z, they are in the memory, right? And then there is a node failure. Part of Y got lost and part of Z got lost. What you need to do, you need to relaunch Spark program first to, recom to recompute the lost part of Y, and then you need to relaunch the MapReduce program again to uh, recompute the files at Z. So we want to do something uh, smarter. The thing we do is we use something called asynchronous checkpointing the basic idea is while a program is writing the data to memory, on the background, in the background, Tycan will asynchronously write, checkpoint the data to the underlayer file system. Say in this particular case, say while you are running the MapReduce program, the Tycan is checkpointing the file sets Y, and maybe it has been checkpointed before the failure, and then you only need to recompute the, the MapReduce program. So this is a very, very simple example. So it could, you, could imagine, you can imagine that it could be a very complicated lineage graph, right? Or a very deep lineage graph. In this case, the order you do the checkpointing do, does matter to the, uh, to the performance of the recomputation. So in our work, we proved that first, uh, even under failure, the system performs better than existing solutions. Second, we, we use our, we, we developed an algorithm called snapshot checkpointing, asynchronous checkpointing, to decide the order of the checkpoint to, to have a bounded recovery time for, to, to recover any data. So in our system, we, all, we also have master fault tolerant. We run master, uh, multiple most, masters in our system and they use Zookeeper to elect the leader. And uh, if there's any crash, after crash, the, the workers will contact the new leader and report their own status to the, to the, to the new leader. So let's talk about the implementation. We implement the system by using uh, Java with uh, more than 15,000 15, lines of code, and we thrift for RPC. And for the underlayer file system, we support HDFS, S3, and the local uh, file system. And yesterday, I just talked with uh, uh, folks from uh, Red Hat. We are going to support a cluster FS very soon. So also, uh, we use uh, Maven and Jenkins for compiling and testing infrastructure. <coughs> so let's talk about some uh, results. So this is a sequential read performance uh, by using Spark program. We ran this uh, experiment on an EC2 cluster with 40 nodes. 
and the y-axis is the uh, read throughput in gigabytes per second, and the x-axis will be uh, on, from the left, H H HDFS, uh, FDS represent, uh, represents flight data center storage, TMDT, which is theoretical maximum disk uh, throughput, and on the right is the tachyon. So for HDFS, due to the no, um, uh, machine type limitation is only four disks, but for FDS and TMDT, we, uh, we have, uh, we assume, 12 disks. And the Tekken use the same node as the HDFS. So for, t for HDFS, it achieved uh, a 4.5 gigabytes per second, and then 30 for FDS, 47 for TMDT, and on the right is Tekken, it's 975 gigabytes per second. And then we do uh, the right uh, experiment to write the binary data the, the experiment sighting is the, the same as the last experiment, just uh, it's for right. And then you can see HDFS is one gigabytes per second, and on the right, Tekken is a uh, uh, little bit more than 300 gigabytes per second. And uh, in the middle is FDS and TMDT. <coughs> to make it more, a little bit more interesting, so we run a realistic workflow using Spark, contains 400 uh, Spark jobs with one terabyte input, file, what input data and four, uh, 500 gigabyte output file. This is also, this was also running on a 40 nodes uh, EC2 cluster. And the Y axis in this case is the uh, seconds, the end-to-end -end latency, how long it's executed from the beginning to the end. And for Tachyon, it's uh, to run the, the whole workflow on top of Tachyon, it took 2.5 seconds, uh, 2.5 minutes, sorry. And for HDFS with OS buffer cache, it's uh, 40, 40 minutes, 40 minutes. So the, the speed up for this case is uh, around 17x. But we want to point out here is the speed up of the workflow really depends on the workload. So for example, if you have a very uh, CPU intensive workflow workload, so in that case, the uh, speed up could be less. So in the, for, by the same uh, experiment, we kill a node after the, the whole workflow execution for Tachyon. So this graph shows what's the performance. On the y-axis is the uh, seconds, uh, and the, on the x-axis is what's the cap for the background asynchronous checkpointing. Uh, it's uh, megabytes per second per node, from zero to uh, 90, uh, 90 megabytes per second per node. And you can see that the, t the green line is the, is the total time, which is the sum of the execution time, which is blue line, and the recovery time, which is a uh, red line. You can see this, uh, the, the sweet spot is uh, 30 megabytes per second per node, which is the highest uh, sustainable um, checkpoint rate we can, we can do on, the EC2, on that EC2 cluster. And uh, no matter which rate you use, the performance is still like uh, more than 10 times faster than, than the case on top of HDFS, even without failure. So then we got some real queries from Conviva to see what's the performance. The first one is a Spark query, which is very uh, IO intensive. We, we run this query on three different settings. The first one is we load the data from HDFS and then do the, from Tekken and do the computation and measure the whole end-to-end -end latency. The second one is we load the data, uh, store it into the uh, Spark cache mode, and then only measure the computation time in this case. And the last one is we just uh, load the data from HDFS and then do the computation measure the whole, whole time. So the y-axis is the execution time in seconds. This is in uh, log scale. And the x-axis is the data size from uh, gigabytes from zero to uh, 250. You can see that uh, both Tachyon and uh, Spark Cache mode, they outperform uh, HDFS mode uh, by 70, 75x. And uh, if you look this carefully, for, uh, on the left side, uh, Spark Cache mode is a little bit, uh, it's a bit faster than uh, than Tachyon. And uh, the reason is for Tachyon, you need to do extra serialization, deserialization. However, uh, for the right side, uh, when you have a lot of data in your, memory, in, your, in your cluster, you see Tachyon will outperform Spark Cache. The reason for this is when you have a lot of data stored in the Spark's JVM, that will trigger more open garbage collection, which make the uh, performance uh, worse. And uh, for Tachyon case, the data is stored uh, off the heap and uh, which will not influence the GC uh, uh, a lot. So we run another query from Conviva. This is less IO intensive. As you can imagine, the speed up for this case is only uh, 12x. And because the computation itself requires more memory, the GC uh, kicks in early for Spark cache mode. 
And uh, let's talk about the uh, alpha release status. We did our uh, developer preview release in April. Um, after that, we got a lot of uh, contributions from, uh, from uh, foreign organizations, say Yahoo, Adobe, uh, Clear Story, and Canviva. We also have two universities, uh, us and uh, Nanjing University. <coughs> so for this particular release, uh, it's, the, it's, uh, it's the first step in our approach. For the first read of the file will be cached in memory, and the writes go synchronously to HDFS, which means there's no lineage information in the developer preview release. And Map, and MapReduce and Spark, they can run on top of Tycan without any code change. But what you probably will see is a serialization and deserialization may become the new bottleneck with a 100% CPU utilization. So this is a feature list we have now. We have the Java file-like API. We are also compatible with uh, Hadoop. Uh, we provide master fault tolerance, uh, native support for row, uh, row tables, which means you can selectively cache particular column in a, in a table. <coughs> and we also provide white and pin list, which means you can pin a set of files in Tycan without being evicted, unless you unpin it later. And we have a web UI and a command line uh, interface. So let's show how to run Spark and uh, Shark run on top of Tycan. So this is the command line you get RDD on top of uh, uh, in Spark without Tycan. You just say, I want to get this RDD call file. This is Spark context dot text file. You gave a HDFS URI, right? And then with Tycan, this is the only thing you need to change. See, uh, the, you change the HDFS URI to be the Tycan URI. Then all the rest of the program should be the same, exactly the, exactly the same. This is the, the way you use Tycan with Spark. And then with Shark, this is the way you create a, a, a Spark cache mode for Shark. You say you create a table called others underscore cached. This, uh, create this table from another table called others, right? And then with Tycan, you only need to change the underscore cached to be underscore score Tycan. And then you just query this particular table as the same, as the same way you query the other uh, other, uh, others underscore cache table. So which is uh, very easy to, to uh, use. And also we did some experiment with Shark too uh, in this uh, developer preview release. Say, so, uh, as we mentioned, serialization and deserialization may become a new bottleneck since everything is in memory, right? So from Shark 0.7, we can store uh, this cache table in Taikia with our uh, fast serial, uh, column serialization deserialization. And this is uh, uh, some result we got. So this is a 20 gigabytes uh, data on five machines. And uh, for full table scan, for the Spark cache mode, it's 1.4 seconds. And for Tycan mode, it's 1.5 seconds. And this is a pure I.O. For this, for this query, right? So you can see Tycan is a little bit uh, slower than the uh, Spark cache mode. But for the group bytes, say you have 10 gigabytes of memory for Spark shark, shark memory. In Spark cache mode, it's uh, 50 to 90 seconds. And uh, uh, for the Tycan mode, it's 2x faster. And when the incre we increase the Spark, uh, Spark shark cache shark memory to be 50, 15 gigabytes, uh, both increase uh, performance a little bit, but Tycan is still faster. And we make it more interesting by doing another experiment. Say, we, we load four uh, 100 gigabytes TPCH data into uh, 17 machines. So in which case, on every machine, you have a decent amount of uh, memory. So we run four different uh, TPCH queries. And you can see in this case, um, Tycan can outperform Spark Cache from 2x to uh, 8x. So uh, by now, let's talk about our uh, future, future roadmap. We are going to support a efficient serialization, deserialization, so which will make like application on top of Tycan easier to have an efficient 30. Uh, the other thing we want to do is, since it, we, it will be multi-tendency, we will try to support uh, fair sharing for memory, and also uh, we will support, have full support for lineage. Another thing is the uh, uh, next release uh, will, will come soon. <coughs> so in the end, I want to acknowledge uh, our teams. So for the research, uh, besides me, we have Ali, uh, Matei, uh, Eric, Scott, and Yang. And uh, the following people also contribute the uh, code. Uh, it's me, Kevin, Bill, Mark, uh, Rong, Hongbin, uh, Vemsi, Rhino, uh, Shanivas, and Dilip. 
uh, want to thank you all. And there are many other people uh, also contribute, to, uh, help us in various ways. Uh, we, we just want to thank you all here. Um, yeah, if you have more, if you're interested more in this, uh, you can visit our uh, website and GitHub, and uh, we can leave the, the rest of the time for Q&A. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, indeed. There. Um, very interesting work. I, I think there is a question that is not clear in my mind, if you could help answer. Um, is it possible for the tachyon table to be created from RDDs? In your examples, you showed order tachyon, right? Mm -hmm. Is it possible to have the order tachyon be created from RDD? Are you asking, uh, say, you have a Spark RDD, yeah. whether you can save RDD into Tycoon, Tycoon? And then use it in Shark. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, of course. So this is the example we showed here, right? So basically, previously, you create a uh, Spark cache table uh, by using this query, right, this query. And then the only thing you need to change, you just rename the other underscore cached to be others underscore Tycoon. The, then the table will be put into Tycheon. And then the benefit is, next time, you, you have the same, for, for if your data is not a lot, you have the same performance. If your data is huge, you will get a better performance with Tycheon. Another benefit will be, say, you shut down your Shock server for whatever reason, or you know, maybe there is a 40, uh, there is a, not a right implementation of UDF, right? So then you restart the Shock server, the data is still in, in Tycheon's memory, which means after restarting the Shark server, you will still get the memory performance by reading this, re this, this table. Um, okay, yeah, that helps. But here, orders is still being loaded from um, Hadoop, HDFS. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So in this, you're asking for the orders, this orders table is still in HDFS, right? So basically, when you create this orders table, you gave the uh, URI to, uh, to uh, it's like Hive, like short query, right? You gave a URI to that. You can just change that URI to be a Tycheon URI. Everything will work. Like everything, uh, even that data will be cached in Tycheon. So this is the same as the how Spark used Tycheon. Say previously, you just created whatever thing by, by calling a uh, HDFS URI, right? And later on, by using Tycheon, you just change that to be a Tycheon URI. So, so which is, what, what I said was, say, in this case, when you create a table, you change that HDFS URI to a Tycheon URI, everything will be in memory. I'll take further comments offline. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Um, can you talk about the performance differences between uh, Tachyon and Spark RDDs? You said there was like a 2x to 3x, it looked like, difference in your TPCH uh, queries. Was that, you know, because Spark has the garbage collection issue, which I, yes. assume, I yes. assume they can solve, or are there any other, Yeah, you know, fundamentally they're both writing in memory, so you should, you, I would expect Spark RDDs to actually be able to, because they have more type information, actually be eventually more performant than Tachyon, but I was wondering if you could talk to that. Yes, yes, so the question is why, in this particular case, uh, Tycoon outperforms Spark Cache. And uh, the, the reason for the question is because RDD is more tightly integrated with Spark inside the Spark JVM, um, um, it should be faster. So, so in this particular case, as you mentioned, yes, is the reason for this is garbage collection. And, and uh, when you have Tycoon, the data is off the heap. It's not like uh, inside the JVM in this case. You, you just uh, you just uh, have a better performance. Say you have a distributed distribute, uh, uh, job, right? Like running on 40 nodes. If one, one machine has a 10 second GC, the whole stage will be blocked for 10 seconds. Say if you have 10 stages, right? You, every stage you have a very big chance to hit a full GC. So in this case, you, your performance will be screwed if you have a lot of data. So this is, for this particular graph, uh, for this particular result, this is the same reason as the previous result we showed here, uh, say in this case, right? As I said, at the beginning, at the beginning of this graph, you can see that, look at this graph carefully, uh, Spark Cache is a little bit faster than Tycoon. That's, the, that's what you mentioned, when the data is not huge. But in the end, we have a lot of data, the same thing for 
us another experiment, you will trigger more open garbage collection, which will make the performance worse. Yes. We repeat that. So the the question the question is uh, whether implementing off the heap um, support inside of the Spark will make this problem go away. I think implementing off off the heap will help somehow in this case, but it will not completely solve the problem. The reason is suppose in your company you have a work you have a use case you have a maybe one week data right you have a, a Monday Tuesday to Sunday. And then the Sunday is the last day data. You query them more often, right? So by using Spark Cache, even you store it off the heap. You need to store all week data inside of the JVM. But if you use Tycheon, right? If you use Tycheon, when you, when, you, when you query the last day data, all the first six days data, they are not relevant to the JVM anyhow, right? So there's no, there's no overhead for the GC from that perspective. There's no single overhead. And then later on, if you want to query the Wednesday data, the Sunday data will be dropped from the, G G from the, from the JVM. So later on, you don't care about that in the GC either. So that's the problem. So from that perspective, that problem will not be solved by using, uh, by using off the heap inside the Spark. Um, so you, uh, you previously mentioned that Tachyon currently supports um, a few file, different file systems. Um, why does Tachyon actually depend at all on what the file system is? I mean, I assume it's just moving stuff from some blocks of memory to other blocks of memory. Why does it care what the underlying file system is? So, so I don't quite understand the question. Are you saying why, why we are using any file system under us? Yeah, so I mean, you, you mentioned Tachyon currently supports HDFS, and it's going to support Gluster and such. I um, see. But if it's just working in memory, why does it matter what the file system is, or whether one exists at all? Yeah, yeah, I see. So, so the, there are two things. The first thing is for read, right? So suppose you already have a distributed file system deployed in your cluster. Excuse me, and you don't want to change it. It's, it's really hard to change a file system in your deployment. And then you just simply run Tycan on top of it. And later on, when you load the data, when, when you read the data, you don't need to, to type on to cache, explicitly type on to cache that particular data for you. And then you just change the URI and put a link between Tycan and those file system. And then Tycan will remember this file you call in Tycan layer is the what's whatever file in the under under layer, right? And later later on it will be a transparent cache for you. The other thing is when you write, right? When you write anything into Tycheon, for now for this particular particular release, in order to make it fault tolerant, you still need to write the data synchronously to the underlayer storage system. That's the reason why we still need a uh, storage system beside, uh, below Tycheon. Also, even in the future, right? Say we have a uh, we have a asynchronous checkpointing, right? So in order to make that work, asynchronous checkpointing still needs to checkpoint the data into the underlayer storage system. So from that perspective, we also need a uh, uh, whatever like reliable uh, underlayer storage system sitting there. Yeah, good question. Okay, last question. The, the, I just wonder whether you have considered, so currently if you wanted to integrate a Tachyon, you needed to mod, make a small modification to indicate it is a Tachyon. So instead of what if you can say, you know, still from the application team point of view using HDFS, and the, under the cover of the HDFS has a Tachyon. I just want maybe assume you, you guys have some conversation with the Hood of yeah, HDFS team. I just wonder, wonder uh, do you I'm want so to share? I'm sorry, I didn't get, get the question. What's the? So the, what, the question is, is the, uh, what kind of interaction you guys have between the Tachyon community or your team and the HDFS? What's the interaction between Tachyon team and the HDFS team? Yeah, I mean, because one could consider Tachyon to be the caching layer of the HDFS. I see. So um, <clears throat> the question is, what's the relationship between Tachyon team and the HDFS team? Um, so, so for now, Tachyon is a caching layer. But as you can see from the talk, 
by having this old lineage concept, it's not just a, a caching layer anymore. And, uh, and the relationship is, you know, we want to do this memory layer thing very well. And the, under the underneath, it could be HDFS, it could be S3, it could be any other um, file system. And we do talk with the uh, HDFS team, but there's, uh, we, 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 we just talk with each other. But for the cooperation, we, we will see, yeah. And also, yeah, and also I want to point out that for the deployment, from deployment perspective, uh, there are different companies, they deploy this from different, uh, uh, in different ways. So for example, some company, they deploy this on top of HDFS directly, and then, and then query the data from Shark or Spark uh, on top of Tachyon. And some other company, they, they launch a uh, EC2 cluster, and then they don't launch, they don't need, even need a uh, HDFS cluster running there, and then only run the Tachyon there, right? And then when they try to fetch the data, they fetch the data from, S Tachyon will fetch the data from S3 directly into Tachyon, and then all the upper layer framework will read the data from Tachyon for the future reference will save you the bandwidth. But for, because you know, you, you run a cluster, you query data several times, you don't wanna like replicate the data into your different disk, which is slow for HDFS case. So it's different, it's not just a, um, on top of HDFS. Yeah, thank you. Let's thank uh, HY again.